Well, it is great to be here with you all today and um, make uh, three girls and Savannah too. I'll get, actually give you a talent to remember your the little Bible story advice. So come see me afterwards and I'll give you an Ecuadorian dollar. Which actually, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so to help remind you of, of the story. And unfortunately, you can't really use the Ecuadorian dollar here because it's Ecuadorian. <laughs> but we do use American dollars in Ecuador, which is interesting, right? Um, the scripture that I'm going to focus in on today, I guess I'm reading it, or are you going to read it? Oh, I can read it, sure. In, it's Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Colossians chapter 1, which is listed right there. And also make reference to Psalms 34, 8 and 2 Corinthians 2. Um, but it says, and this is Paul's letter to the church of Colosseo, and he is saying, he says the following things. I'm reading from the ESV version. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our, fellow, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. In Psalm 34, 8 says, For taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And it's the second Corinthians. Yeah. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphant procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the room of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing to one fragrance from death to death, and to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Before I share, I'm going to sing a song in Spanish, so you can get a little taste, a little bit more taste of Spanish. And it may be a familiar song to you, um, I don't know any of you knew Keith Green. He was famous back in the 70s. Um, but he wrote this song, The Lord, You're Beautiful. And as I was thinking about coming back to the States and sharing with churches, um, I always like to sing a song. And um, this is the one that God laid on my heart because it was a reminder of like why I'm doing what I'm doing. And the focus is back on God. And the focus is the reminder of like whatever I do, it's not so I am raised up, it is so that God is raised up and he gets all the glory because that's why we're here. It's not about us, right? So, and the second verse talks about lighting the fire and helping me to remember my first love. And I don't know about you, but sometimes as I've been walking with the Lord and I've been doing that for over 30 years, I sometimes feel like my spark is really diminished, right? And so that prayer of recommitment, of God, throw another match on there and help me to remember that first love that I have. Um, I think it's important that we're always giving ourselves back to him. It's a daily thing. It's not just the once and done. 
but it's constant. God help me through this this walk of this journey of faith. So this is a Lord you're beautiful for Hermoso Harris Senor. You know, so it's more to It's great to be here. Can I take this off? It will help me not use my hands a lot. I tend to use my hands when I talk. I, I don't know if you noticed that in the video, I like clap my hands twice. Every time I watch the video, I'm like, oh, don't clap your hands, but it's already recorded, so. Um, but yeah, my name is Rachel, and it's, it's a privilege to be here today and get to know you guys as the church. And thank you so much for your willingness to join the ministry in Ecuador. Um, I was there for three and a half years, and um, now I'm on my home assignment, looking to go back to Ecuador in October, so about a month left. And um, I've been back since April, the end of April, um, on my home assignment. And if any of you are not familiar with what home assignment or furlough is, it's, it's a time for the missionaries to come back to their home countries and actually just get to connect with their supporters, the churches that are, are behind them, to share what God is doing and to um, give an update personally instead of just a prayer letter and uh, to continue to raise any support we need to raise, but also just get it filled up again in a sense. Uh, home assignment is a full-time job. It's not a, a time of rest by any means. Uh, it's definitely a lot of traveling, a lot of... Um, connecting with people. So if you're an introvert, it's very difficult. And even as a person that's an extrovert, but sort of an introvert, as I'm getting older, it can be exhausting. <laughs> and um, the God is good. He's provided everything I've needed for this home assignment, a place to lay my head, a car to drive, and many doors have been opened to love and receive me and, and just 
give me chances to share what God is doing. Um, I'm going to back up so you guys can know a little bit more about my story since I'm a newer missionary to you. Um, this is not my first rodeo. I actually have been doing missions since I graduated from college. I went to Geneva College, which is down the road a little bit. Yeah, in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Um, and I graduated with a degree in elementary and special education. So I was a teacher by trade. Uh, that's why talking to the kids was like, that's super easy for me. <laughs> like, um, this, that doesn't um, make me nervous at all. Um, and so I studied elementary and special education, did part of my student teaching actually in Paraguay. So that's South America. Um, it's kind of like uh, in the middle by Argentina, Bolivia, like a landlocked country. And um, I went there to do my student teaching, and then I, I was like, man, I would love to come back here and teach. And so God opened the doors for me to go back and start a special ed program for a girl with Down syndrome who's now like almost 30 years old, which is crazy to think about. But um, at that time, she was just five or six years old. And I thought I'd only be in Paraguay for a couple years, you know, come back to the States, you know, get married, have a family, eventually go to the mission field. That's what I thought was going to happen. Um, here I am 23 years later. I am still single, but I'm very content in my singleness. And I have spiritual children all over the world. And I had the opportunity to teach not just in Paraguay, but then in 2011, I actually went to Ethiopia, so the other side of the world. So I lived in Africa, and I taught at a missionary school there as well. And um, I'm with an organization called SIM, which stands for nothing, actually, now. Uh, a long time ago, I stood for Sudan Interior Mission, because that's where they started initially in the world. But now we are, we have missionaries going everywhere from everywhere which is awesome. And um, so I was in Ethiopia for seven years and uh, in between Paraguay and Ethiopia, I, I actually taught a few years in the States near um, Washington, DC and got some experience in public schools here, which is a great ministry, <laughs> much needed ministry. This was 15 years ago. I have no idea what it's like now. Um, I can only imagine. But um, God sent me to Africa, and I, as I said, I worked in a, a school that had a British curriculum, so I got to learn how the British do it. And uh, again, working with special ed, and um, I actually taught Spanish there for a year. It's amazing how God just uses your talents. Whatever talents he gives you, he, he allows you to use them. And then God called me out of the classroom, and he asked me to support homeschool families because a lot of our missionaries that live outside of the capital city, they need to homeschool their kids because they're sending them to a local school in Ethiopia is not going to be an option because it's not going to be English and it's not going to be um, a high enough education level. So I would go out and I'd travel and I'd visit homeschool families and support them and kind of monitor where their kids were at. And then God called me out of the classroom altogether, out of educating children. And he said, I'm going to call you now to go back to South America. And now I get to just focus on teaching the word of God to women and doing discipleship and evangelism. And I, that's what I did in Ecuador. So I've gone to South America, Africa, I'm back in South America, and that's been my life for the past 23 years. Um, it's pretty amazing, and it's a roller coaster ride. So if you give your life to God, just be ready. Anything could happen. And I've learned to never say never, because I was never going to go to Paraguay. I was never going to go to Ethiopia. So I'll just be open to whatever God has. <laughs> and I don't know how long I'll be in Ecuador. Um, God's my boss, so he, he always... Tells me, you know, stay or go. And I just, I'm like, okay, let's do this, God. I trust you. Um, and I found that it's been really good to trust God. 
Um, you would think like moving to, to Africa or moving to South America. I do speak Spanish fluently, as you could tell. Uh, so it is a lot easier to be in South America because I can communicate with the people. But God is still, he's my traveling companion. He's my best friend. He's, he's been my strength through all of it. And so um, even as I think about going back to Ecuador, which you can keep Ecuador in your prayers, please, because they're in the, uh, they're in the process of one president is leaving office and they'll have a new president come in. And there's been um, some political unrest and it's not, uh, how do I say it? It's a little bit more violent than it has been in the past, but I thankfully live in the Andes Mountains, as you can see. I'm away from a big major city, so it's not as much a danger to me as if I was living in the capital of Quito or in a bigger city. So I don't necessarily hear as much of the, the action that's happening around, but still, thank you for your prayers for safety. For, did you guys know what it's like living here in America? I mean, I, I pray for safety for you guys. Also, I mean, it's pretty, pretty crazy the way the world is. But the thing that I want to focus in on is the safety that God gives us because of the gospel. And he, he encourages us to keep growing in that. Um, how many of you have been a believer for five years or less? Ten years or less? Fifteen years or less? 20 years, 30, 40. So we have some people, 50, 50 years or more, you've been walking with God? Wow. So we have some people that have really like been with Jesus in all of this time. And I want to encourage us because when we get to a certain stage of our faith, we need to make sure that we are sharing that faith with others and that we know the gospel message. I love evangelism. That's one of my, I love to do that. Like, just go talk to people, hear where they're at. And, you know, some people that's really scary. But for me, it's like, the scarier thing for me is to know that they're destined to go to hell. And that's scary to me. So, but the, the question that we need to be thinking about as believers is, are we growing? And is it evidence in our walk and in our life? And then do we know the gospel message? So if we look at the passage um, in, in Colossians chapter 1, because now when, I, when I'm working with women, and I'll be working a lot more, I think this next term, with lay people in the church, and trying to train them up on how to facilitate Bible studies, how to um, help people understand the simple truths. That's going to be my focus. So I'm still going to be like teaching in a sense. So see that talent that God's given me way back when, I'm still using it, but now it's kind of a different focus. And so as I think about that, I think about um, verses 9 through 14 in Colossians 1. I don't know, are you able to get that back up there so they can look at it, please? Verses 3 through 7 are, are just Paul saying, thank you, thank you. Um, and he's, he's like, I know you're partners in the gospel, and thank you for being a partner in the gospel of, of Ecuador. Um, what's going on there? But let's think a little bit more about our own personal life, our spiritual walk of life, because it's, it can get really easy to get, like, just kind of in the cruise control, right? Oh, I know that. I've read that. And... So let's think about this. In verse 9, it said, it talks about that he hasn't ceased to pray. And prayer is a huge thing. I've learned this, that prayer is the first and the most important part of ministry. Actually, SIM's motto is by prayer. And I understand that now. Because I could, I could read the Bible, I could take notes, I could study, I think through my questions, what am I going to ask? But if I don't go ahead of time and pray for the ministry, for the people, then I've already missed the first step of ministry. So I love how Paul says, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you. 
He starts off with prayer. What is he praying? That they're going to be filled with the knowledge of his will. God's will. Filled with the knowledge of what God wants them to do. In all spiritual wisdom and understanding. How many of you need some understanding, some wisdom? Anyone here? Yeah, I, I'm always like, God, could you give me some more wisdom? And I love the promise in James that says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask from who? Who will give you wisdom? God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. So he's praying that we will be filled with the knowledge of the wisdom, with the, all the spiritual one, wisdom and understanding, the knowledge of God's will and spiritual knowledge and understanding. Think about that. If we really start praying that for the people that we're trying to win towards Christ, or our family members, or our friends, what kind of impact could that be on them? Could that have on them? So start with prayer. <coughs> start with prayer. And then we see in verse 10, it talks about this whole idea of walking in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. This is something that I had an opportunity. You got to see that I was able to baptize some of my spiritual children. That was amazing. If you've ever gotten the experience to do that, like it's just like, wow. Wow. Um, and this is something that I talk with, like Carolina and Danny, her sister, and other young ladies, and, and even their moms, their aunts. Are you walking in a way that is worthy of the Lord? Because remember, when we come to Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone, and the new is here. So my life over here, when I didn't know Jesus, probably looks very different than my life over here after I come to know Jesus. And for those of us that you raised your hands, you're like, I've been walking with Jesus for a really, really long time. Is your life still like this, or has it moved more? Are you growing more in the knowledge of the Word of God? Because if you just stay here, you're not growing. You're not growing if you just have said, oh, I'm saved. That's it. So we need to be growing and walking in a different way because as we get older, the different seasons of our life, we're going to be faced with different things. And that gives us an opportunity to show who God is in those seasons. I just, somebody asked me the other day, you know, people ask me all the time, where do you like the best to live? You know, Paraguay, Ethiopia, or now Ecuador. And I always tell them that I've always lived where God needed me to live and for that season of my life. It's not like one was better than the other. So there were certain things I needed to learn in my 20s when I was in Paraguay, my 30s when I was in Ethiopia, and now in my 40s. Yeah, I'm only in my 40s. Um, you're like, wait, did she start when she was like six years old or something? <laughs> but each season of life, I've had to learn different things. So as I was a 20-year-old, learning how to be a teacher and living overseas and learning how to be an adult living in Paraguay, that was very different than being a 30-year-old living in Africa and teaching a British system and understanding a different culture and now a whole other culture. Every place I've had to learn how to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. So how is your walk? Does it show that the Lord is something that is a priority in your life? Or is it just the Sunday, Wednesday thing? Especially those of us that have been walking with God for a long time. We have to keep that in check. And I ask myself that as well. So whatever I say to you, I'm, I'm asking myself, okay? How do we know we're walking? It says that we're going to be bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So I'm walking with God. I'm bearing fruit. What, what kind of fruit? Apples, oranges, bananas. I mean, we have tons of fruit in Ecuador, so any fruit you can think of, we have it. Is that the kind of fruit we're talking about? What, what kind of fruit is this? Anybody? I think I heard it. 
think somebody said spiritual fruit, right? Spiritual fruit. Remember that Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is. Those are the fruits. Where people see more love, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control in our lives. Or are they still seeing some music? <clears throat> are we walking in a manner where, they, where we're producing fruits and increasing in the knowledge? How do we increase in the knowledge of God? By reading his word. By studying his word. Don't just read it. Study it. And as I, as I work with people who are young believers in Ecuador, most of them come from a, a Catholic background, so they're not really encouraged as much to read the gospel for themselves. So this may be like the first time they're like reading it and opening it and thinking about it. And I'm like, don't just read your Bible every day. Anyone can read the Bible every day. But when you study it, that's what changes your life. That's what changes your life. I always used to say as a teacher that, let's see if I remember now, learning is a change of behavior. Learning is a change of behavior. Again, walking in a manner worthy of God, bearing fruit, increasing in knowledge. This is all talking about growth, which I'm actually shrinking as I get older, but we're supposed to be growing spiritually. Okay? And then we have these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful promises in verses 11 and 12. We're going to be strengthened with all power. According to God's glorious might, his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy. That's pretty exciting. I love how you guys say, hey, you guys have any joy moments this week? Well, we're supposed to, like, as believers, we should be bubbling over with joy. Our lives should be these little bubbly water, sparkling waters, you know? That we crack it open and go, and we're like, bubbles everywhere. The joy of the Lord is my strength, right? That's what we say as kids. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> joy. Do people see joy in our lives or do they see us defeated? Yes, this world is not easy. Yes, this world is chaotic. Yes, we deal with pain and suffering and trauma and death. But we have a hope. We have a joy. Do we live with that? Or do we just say, whatever? Because the world is looking. Because we have an inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 12. We have an inheritance in the saints in light. Light. That light comes from God, guys. It's God in us that helps us to have all of these things. And I don't know for you, but like for me, I'm like, thank you, Jesus, because I can't do it in my own strength. And why, why do we have this joy, right? We have this hope. Verses 13 and 14. This is the gospel message, guys. He's delivered us from the domain of darkness, transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. That's the gospel. That's the message that we carry, that all of us are carrying, no matter where we're at in the world. I have the privilege of carrying that in Ecuador. I would say in Spanish. You have the privilege of carrying that in or like Midwestern Pennsylvania, <laughs> you know, wherever you're at, in your jobs, in your homes, and in, in your communities. So be that light. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with this this visual because I think like Paul was saying, what is this? I always have a visual because I've learned that visuals stick more than what you I may say. So I have the verse up there. Um, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? How many of you love coffee? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm talking to a good group here. All right. So this is this is Don Victor. This is from my neighborhood, Mount Caltos, because I'm up in the mountains, so we have amazing coffee. So if you ever come visit me in Ecuador, you have really, really good coffee. 
two different ones. Um, so if I make coffee in Ecuador, this could be one of the ways I make it. This is actually an Ecuadorian coffee maker. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't see all the Okay. So this is an Ecuadorian coffee maker. What I would do is I would dump my coffee grinds in this filter, right? Then I would add water, boiling water, of course, and then it would, cough, it would filter out and make coffee. I don't make my coffee like this every day because I don't have enough patience. Still working on that fruit of the spirit patience. But this is one of the ways that my friends will often make it when I go to their house. And after a Bible study, like when I'm eating bananas with peanut butter and cheese, and it's 9 o'clock at night and I'm having coffee, 9 p.m. It's not decaf either. So, no. no. Um, I want you to think about this sort of like with, you know, this whole idea is he's qualified us. He's, he gives us the strength that we need. And this reminds me of the Trinity. And this is a very loose, loose way of talking about the Trinity. I know there's all kinds of ways, and none of them are perfect, but just work with me here, okay? So this is the, it's called muchacho, actually, which means boy, little boy. This is what will sustain and hold. And I think about this as this is God in my life. God sustains me, holds me, places me where I need to be. This is me, the little cup. And he's like, Rachel, this is where I want you to do life and ministry. And, and this is how I want you to do it. He holds me. He sustains me. He guides me. He's my shepherd. That's what this says. The Lord is my shepherd. Listen, you are to me fast forward. So God is sustaining and holding me, placing me exactly where I need to be in ministry. Then I have a Holy Spirit that's going to filter out all of the craziness of this world. All the lies that I try to believe that maybe I've thought about for all my life and God's like, nope, that's a lie. Here's the truth right here. Here's the truth. And the Holy Spirit filters out the impurities. And then when I add Jesus, the living water, and it brews. I have an amazing cup of coffee that I get to enjoy. And the people around me are going to smell that. And so that's why I have that. I have the verse that says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Are we giving people a chance to taste and see that God is good? Or in the verses in 2 Corinthians to talk about what kind of aroma are we? Are we an aroma of death? For our free and remote life. So as we think about all of this, and I think about all of this, let's be a fragrant aroma for Christ. No matter where we're at in this world, thank you for helping me to be part of the aroma of Christ in Ecuador. And for the opportunity to get to know you guys. And let's just be the aroma of Christ. Let's be the aroma of life to those around us. Because the world needs it. Amen? The world needs it, and we can do it because we have God in us. So, thank you very much for your chance to share. If you have any questions, I'll be out there afterwards. Thank you, Rachel. Um, again, following the service, you're welcome to uh, play some of her music and to speak with her and uh, Continue to keep her in your prayers as God uses her.